You're listening to the Vocabit Podcast, where I help students improve their vocabulary for the SAT, ACT, and life itself using my unique and research-backed story-based method. On this podcast, I'm sharing the best tips and tricks for a more enriched vocabulary and pain-free test day. Hello, and welcome to episode number 18 of the Vocabit Podcast. I'm Erica Abbott, a former English and history teacher, the author of the young adult novel Ahead of Her Time, and the founder of the eponymously named vocabulary company Vocabit. We've officially made it to part five of our five-part miniseries on how to instantly sound smarter. We've done good versus well, less versus fewer, how people use theirs when they really mean there are with sentences like, there's a lot of things I have to do today. And the last episode covered how to know which pronouns to use at the beginning of a sentence, whether it's me and him went to the store or he and I went to the store. And spoiler alert, it's he and I. And it was kind of hard to decide what to do for this last one. I actually had a lot of people texting me and emailing me suggestions, which was pretty cool. One was that versus who, how people say things like, she's a person that does a lot for other people. They mean to say she's a person who saying she's a person that is kind of dehumanizing. If you flipped it, it would be like saying it's a stapler who does a really good job. It kind of makes a stapler seem alive. If you say it's a stapler who just like it, it's kind of dehumanizing to say she's a person that. Another one that came up a lot was reminding people that anyways is not a word. The problem with that one is they have actually added it to the dictionary, kind of like how they've added ain't to the dictionary. I still recommend using anyway instead of anyways, though, because it sounds a lot more professional and people get pretty judgy over that one. I decided to go in a different direction for the official fifth way to instantly sound smarter because I'm all about the story, as you know, and the stories have already been stretched a little thin here as we've been talking about grammar, so I couldn't resist the opportunity to share this one. For the fifth way to instantly sound smarter, we're going to dive into the so-called rule that you should never end a sentence with a preposition. And this rule, you'll notice, is totally dogmatic. Never end a sentence with a preposition. It leaves no room for exceptions. And good old Winston Churchill, yes, that Winston Churchill, according to a rather apocryphal story, meaning it may or may not be true, Churchill was doing some writing either for a book or an article and Not a lot of people know this, but Churchill was actually a pretty prolific writer in addition to a brilliant politician and military strategist. He's going through his edits, and if you've seen The Crown on Netflix, I kind of imagine all of this happening like in his giant bathtub. There's water sloshing out from under the door. He's got a cigar in his mouth, and he's reading his edits, and he finds that one of his sentences has been contorted beyond recognition by some well-meaning editor to avoid ending a sentence with a preposition. And I wish I knew what Churchill's original sentence was, but unfortunately, we only have Churchill's supposed response to the editor. According to the story, Churchill scribbled back, this is the sort of bloody nonsense up with which I will not put. And of course, he's mocking the editor because if he'd said, this is the sort of bloody nonsense I won't put up with, he'd be (gasps) ending a sentence with a preposition. The other version of his response is slightly cleaner. It's that he said, this is the sort of English up with which I will not put. Now, I personally think that if this story is true at all, Churchill probably did write bloody nonsense. And then yet another well-meaning editor came in and censored it. In case you haven't noticed, history is basically a giant game of telephone. But all of this illustrates that the so-called rule that you can never end a sentence with a preposition isn't strictly true. If you end up bending over backwards, speaking in these awkward, contorted sentences, you know, this is the sort of thing up with which I will not put, that's not better. That's not going to be perceived as clearer, better English. However, here's my little vocabit spin on this. Just like anyways is technically now a word, but I still recommend using anyway, even if there might technically be sentences where it's better to end a sentence with a preposition. This whole never end a sentence with a preposition rule is so pervasive, I still advise you to avoid it when you can. Now, I can already hear some people being like, uh, okay, yeah, well, that's great, but what's a preposition again? And don't worry, there's basically only one sentence where I repeatedly hear people ending sentences with prepositions. So instead of going through a whole preposition talk, which would be tedious in the extreme, I'm just going to tell you to avoid this sentence. 
It's people summing things up by saying things like, so that's where I'm at. Unlike the Churchill example, where it's clearer just to end the sentence with a preposition, at isn't really necessary here and it's really easy to avoid. Here's what I do instead. Instead of saying, that's where I'm at, I say, so that's where I am. And I found that it's a really convenient swap because it still has that eh. So it buys you an extra second if you start going for the at on accident. You can just change it to am. I have a friend who did her master's in Cairo. And because of the time change, we didn't talk on the phone all that much. We would do these long WhatsApp voice messages. And sometimes we might not talk for a week or a few weeks, and then we'd fill each other in. And I noticed that at the end of almost every single one of these messages, at least one of us would say, so that's where I'm at. And eventually, I just trained myself to say, so that's where I am on whatever I just filled her in on. So the fifth way to instantly sound smarter is not to never end a sentence with a preposition, but to avoid ending sentences with prepositions. And an easy one to have on your radar just to swap out is, that's where I'm at. Just swap it out with, that's where I am, or that's where we're at, for that's where we are. If you are enjoying my painless approach to learning, don't forget to sign up for the Vocabit Ambassador Program. It's a great, flexible summer opportunity. You can commit as much or as little time as you'd like. Basically, you get to help me spread the word about Vocabit, and for each person you refer who signs up for a membership, you can earn up to $40. It's a flat $40 for annual signups, and it's prorated for monthly signups. You can learn more and apply at vocabit.com ambassadors, and there is also a link in the side menu. If you're not a Vocabit member yet, now is definitely a great time to sign up. You can sign up for a membership at vocabit.com. That's V-O-C and then Abbott like my last name, A-B-B-E-T-T. And that is it for today. See you guys on Thursday. 